All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica Corda. I'm the Director of Business Development at the Tech Collective. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our organization, we are the IT Association for the state of Rhode Island, and we provide training for our members as well as informational sessions such as this, just so that we can help develop the, the IT workers um, and others in our state and, and outside as well through these virtual presentations. This morning, we're, we're pleased to have Namoda Garcia from Ocean, um, present for us on the process and power of intent listening. Um, Nomoda is a communications administration administrator for Ocean and just have, as I've come to know her, she's the woman who when you're at one of their enormous events, she's the woman in charge, but she's also the woman who makes everyone feel like they're the main screen presenter, that they're the VIP for the day. So we knew that she would have a lot to offer. And I think I wanted a little bit of her magic to find out how does she do that? How does she listen to others to really make it seem like they're that only person on the planet? And then I think she has a little bit of the ability to get what she needs to from other people. So today's program is brought to us um, from the Women in Technology Initiative at the Tech Collective. And we have two upcoming events as well. One is on October 7th, it's Telling Your Story Right with Jen Silbert from Spartina Consulting. And then one will be a whole program of, of mentoring. And that particular program will only be for women. Um, but if it's if you're interested in becoming a mentor for another woman in, um, in technology or if you feel that you would like a mentor, that's on October 15th. Both events are available on our website and a little bit later I'll put that website address into the chat box. If you have any questions, if you want to pose them in the chat um, or raise your hand in here and we'll I know Nomoda wanted it to kind of be a a conversation and have a like so it's not just her presenting for the whole time so feel free to post those in chat so thank you Nimoda. we look forward to hearing uh from what you have to say and thank you all for your attendance the floor is yours uh thank you monica um and good morning to everyone uh, as monica mentioned uh, my name is Nimota garcia um, i'm the communications admin for ocean and Although the majority of my career has been within the technical sector, um, I am a very non-technical person. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to fulfill the tasks at my job, um, I need to listen and listen intently and engage and ask questions often uh, in order to know what's going on. Because I'm sure as uh, some of you guys know, engineering, uh, the engineering speak, it's very unique. You know, they use a lot of code when they speak, tons of acronyms. So listening is key for me on a daily basis. Uh, also, full transparency, I am, I don't consider myself an expert on listening. Um, when, like Monica was saying, when she first approached me with this idea, she wanted me to kind of discuss how I'm able to, um, you know, host these events and make everyone feel you know very welcome and i told her i said well i'm just a good listener monica at the end of the day that's all everybody really wants is for someone to truly listen to them and understand what they're saying so um these next few guy these next few slides uh will just be you know little guides and reminders to help us uh, be better listeners and communicators so uh, this next slide, um, society has come a long way in terms of how people prefer to communicate and how we listen to one another. Um, I believe that I can say that I'm a good listener uh, because I've come from an era where in order to communicate with people, you had to physically communicate with them, whether picking up the phone, going to their house and having that physical interaction. Whereas nowadays, people just prefer a simple text message. It's as if people shun the idea away of talking. Even if you say, um, yeah, you know, I gave you a call and I left you a voice message for what I needed. You know, people will say, oh, I don't even check my voicemail. You know, don't even bother. 
uh, just just send me the text message with the information. It's as though people are just like, you know, this this I don't want to I don't want to talk. Um, so being part of that analog childhood digital adulthood era, um, I've been able to have plenty of practice and have spent countless number of hours on the phone talking, probably more so than my mom would have preferred uh, with people. You know, so that has been that's played a pivotal role in, in my social skill set and has strengthened my ability to communicate and listen when spoken to. So this morning, um, I hope you're able to find some useful tips and helpful reminders for being a good listener. And today uh, we are going to discuss hearing versus listening, uh, different listening styles, how to use them in order to successfully trans translate requests into action, as well as uh, some steps for effective listening and how they fit into your everyday life. Um, okay. Uh -huh. so, hello, did anyone have a question? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, so are you a good listener or are you just simply hearing? Uh, the majority of times people want to speak and they really have no interest in listening to what someone is saying. Uh, they're listening simply for an opportunity to respond so that the speaker can understand and hear their point of view rather than listening to understand the message that's being presented. Uh, it is necessary to listen specifically with purpose and intent. So like the old saying goes, uh, that's the reason why we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. So most times, uh, especially when you're busy and working on different things, I know for a lot of people, you're working from home. So while you're at home, you may be working on a project. You may be trying to take care of your child. You may be trying to get dinner ready, doing the laundry, uh, whatever the circumstances may be. Uh, there's just a lot going on. So it's hard for you to really listen to something and you just are kind of hearing what's going on. So as you can see here, um, hearing is the perceived sound by ear and it's usually done involuntarily. Whereas when you listen, um, it requires concentration you have to be very intentional when you do it. It's voluntary and it's a means of uh, a way to communicate. So I have found that um, when I really need to truly listen to what someone is sharing with me, I have to remove all distractions uh, and provide my undivided attention. And so I try to give eye contact. Um, it helps with my focus. I remove my cell phone. Uh, sometimes I have to set my daughter up in our living room uh, because you know she'll see the screen on and she'll want to come in and have a party and <laughs> it's hard for me to you know focus on what um, I'm listening to with all those distractions so if you just eliminate those distractions it'll help you focus more and truly listen and not just hear what someone is saying what is your listening style so I am all of these styles at any given moment um, I'm a mom, a wife, a friend, a daughter, a coworker. I use these styles almost whenever um, I'm on the other end of someone sharing information with me. So um, the first one I'm going to discuss is active listening. So if you're being an active listener, you are observing the body language to help you understand the message that's being sent. So techniques um, include if someone is speaking to you, you often paraphrase what they say. Um, you repeat the words that they're saying to help you understand, to help them understand you receiving the message. Um, some nonverbal cues. You do a lot of nodding. I can see Monica, you're nodding as I'm as I'm talking. Um, you can lean forward in agreement, or you can use affirmations like like, hmm, okay, yep, totally, yep, I understand that, I get that. The next one is informational style of listening. Uh, this is the ability to understand a speaker's message. So being able to separate the main idea from the sub point and then down to the details. Um, if you think of a student, uh, they're in a classroom, they're observing all, absorbing all of this information, listening to learn whatever it is their instructor is teaching them. And with that knowledge, you know, in turn, they're expected to have discussions or be prepared for uh, tests and such. The next one is critical. 
uh, listening to evaluate and to analyze a situation. Usually listeners, when using this particular style, um, they're looking for evidence and logical reasoning for information they're receiving. So I probably usually, usually use this mostly, um, use this style mostly at work, uh, whether I'm meeting with my team members or if I'm doing one-on-ones with my boss, um, as well as when I'm planning events for members. So um, being responsible for the event management at my job from start to finish, I have to listen critically to the wants and needs of my team um, in order to provide them what they need for an event. So if they, if the topic is ransomware, you know, I'm not going to go and look for someone whose expertise is in Wi-Fi or in filtering or something. You know, I need to evaluate and analyze what it is they want before reaching out and um, searching for uh, prospective uh, speakers and sponsors. The next style is appreciative. Uh, so this is for listening purposes. There's no pressure on the listener when you use this style of listening. Unlike the other ones, um, this doesn't rely on messages from the speaker. It's more so how you respond as a listener. So this is certainly the more informal style of listening. It's more enjoyable. Uh, I probably like this one the best because I can truly be at ease, you know, let my hair down a little bit. Um, I've recently gotten into podcasts and audiobooks, especially, you know, during the times of being home and just kind of being stuck in the house. So I I certainly really, um, really love the uh, the appreciative style of listening. It helps me escape reality a little bit. Um, and the next one is empathetic. So listening to understand the speaker's feelings and emotions. Um, I probably use this style the most outside of work and more in parenting. Um, so I have a five-year-old daughter and she started school yesterday, a new school. And um, although she was very excited, she often kept talking about, you know, she would say, oh, well, mama, I'm, I'm gonna miss my old school and I'm gonna miss my old friends. And, you know, I, I'm just gonna miss my teacher. So instead of me being kind of like, oh, you know, don't worry, you're gonna, have new friends and you're gonna be in a new school. Um, I let her share those emotions with me and just kind of let her sit with it and just, you know, had her walk me through it. Like, oh, well, what are some of the things you'll miss? Why don't you share with me some of those memories? And, you know, we can certainly always go back there and visit your old school and your old teacher. And just kind of when you're using that style, you, you let the speaker lead the discussion and, whichever direction, you know, they're feeling in, at that moment. Uh, an acronym, like I told you, the, the engineers that I work with, they love acronyms. So I, I wanted to, I certainly wanted to bring this to this presentation. Uh, once you settle on the listening style that you're going to use at any given time, um, these are the steps for a more effective, uh, more effective way of engaging with the speaker. So. Uh, it's called RASA, receive, appreciate, summarize, and ask questions. So when you're receiving uh, what the speaker is saying, you're paying very close attention and you're focusing on the message they're trying to convey. Uh, some helpful tips is, like I mentioned before, using eye contact, uh, being focused, and eliminating all distractions. Uh, the next one is appreciate, being open-minded, um, having a positive attitude, and making it a non-judgmental zone. It's certainly very difficult when you are speaking to someone and they just kind of seem like they have, you know, a chip on their shoulder. And it's difficult as a speaker um, when you have an audience like that. You, you can't truly feel comfortable sharing messages when you kind when you have that when you have an audience like that. So it's always good to be positive um, and just make it comfortable for the speaker. The next one is summarize, running a brief summary of the discussion, hitting points in areas uh, that were highlights for you. That also shows that you were in fact listening to what the speaker was sharing. And the next one is ask questions. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. The more detail that you provide to the speaker, the more they'll know, you know, that you understood what they're saying. And if you didn't, 
it's okay. You know, you can always ask, hey, can you explain that to me again? Um, but in a different way. I know with myself and working with um, engineers, I'll ask an engineer something and, you know, it'll totally be way over my head. And I'm the type of person, if I don't understand it, I'll say, you know what, that that jargon you're using makes absolutely no sense to me. So can you explain it a different way? And they're always so gracious and like, oh, yes, Nimos, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let me speak. Let me talk to you about it in regular terms. Um, so next, I have um, a small clip that I want to share where I want you guys to um, uh, comment on what you see in the scene. So give me one second because this. Uh, OK. Uh, I don't know. Can you guys see the video? OK. OK. First, there was PlayStation, a.k.a. PS1. Then there's PS2, PS3, and now PS4. And that makes sense. You'd think after Xbox, there'd be Xbox 2. But no. Next came Xbox 360. Hmm? And now, after 360, comes Xbox One. <laughs> Why one? Maybe that's how many seconds of thought they put into naming it. Can you get the butter, please? Yep. Yeah. However, with the Xbox One, I can control my entire entertainment system using voice commands. Up until now, I've had to use Leonard. <laughs> then get the other one. Pass the butter. Get, hang on. I don't feel like you're taking this dilemma seriously. <laughs> Fine, Sheldon. You have my undivided attention. OK, now, the PS4 is more angular and sleek looking. No way. You, it, it's true. But the larger size of the Xbox One may keep it from overheating. <laughs> you wouldn't want your gaming system to overheat? No, see, well, you absolutely would not. And then furthermore, the Xbox One now comes with a Kinect included. Included? Yes. <laughs> not sold separately you, although the ps4 uses cool new gddr5 ram while the xbox one is still using the conventional ddr3 memory why would they still be using ddr3 are they nuts <laughs> see that's what i thought but then they go and throw in an es ram buffer oh what are you saying who's they the xbox you're kidding no i am not this ES RAM buffer should totally bridge the 100 gigabit per second bandwidth gap between the two RAM types. This is a nightmare. How will you ever make a decision? You see, I don't know. What should I do? Please pass the butter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's exactly how it is um, at my office when the engineers are talking to me and I just a lot of the times this stuff goes right over my head but you know they're so passionate about their ram and you know ps px box and stuff so uh, let me just pull back up my let me pull back up the the presentation okay okay can you guys see this yeah yeah, we're on the describe the speaker and listener in the scene. Yeah. Okay, so does anyone want to say uh, share what they what they noticed in that quick quick scene? Describe. You, you can unmute yourself if you want to comment on that. I think it's probably more efficient um, than typing. But someone wrote in both weren't really listening to the other. Yeah. Would anyone want to share what they think, um, what style of listening uh, Amy was exhibiting? I'll pull that slide back up so you can reference it. Empathetic. <laughs> Empathetic, certainly. She was certainly letting him um, share his 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 frustration for the uh, Piet the Xbox in the PS4, so <laughs> certainly was empathetic. Anything else? Was she <laughs> repeating herself? Um, was she giving any nonverbal cues? 
paraphrasing at all. She was she was exhibiting a lot of this um, active style of listening, even though she was very annoyed herself because she just really wanted him to pass her the butter. But when she realized um, she wasn't going to get what she wanted until she listened to him, that's when she said, OK, why don't I take another angle and 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 do it this way so that I can in turn get what I need, which was in this case, the butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so this next slide, um, I just put up um, two useful, uh, helpful resources. One, uh, the book, uh, The Lost Art of Listening, uh, How Learning to Listen Can Improve Relationships. And this is across the board, um, whether you're, um, you, you can relate it to work, um, in your personal life, if you're a parent, you know, with friends, uh, marriage or whatever. And um, the next one is a website um, that you can use. It provides a lot of content, a lot of articles, um, examples of effective listening skills. Um, and I have here, um, just to wrap up, you know, you want to speak in such a way that others love to listen to you and listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. Um, I hope you were able to gain uh, some insight. You know, a lot of this stuff I'm sure people know, but it's always helpful to have small reminders um, and, you know, different methodologies and styles to be more of an effective listener. Um, and I have my contact information here. Thank you for listening. Um, I have my email and my phone number if you need somebody to vent to or you need someone to just listen to your ideas about something. Um, I'm available. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Namoda, for imparting some, some knowledge. We can open it up if there are any questions. Again, if you want to just unmute yourself, we can do that. Um, I know there's there's a lot of material, and I think the, the video clip was super. It just kind of puts into light, I think, sometimes how we how we look as well of like slam on the desk just past the butter is like <laughs> I'm sure we you, we all reach that of like just just give me what I need enough of this other piece I don't care about these details and that's, you know hopefully we don't scare the listener as much as Sheldon looked a little bit petrified at Amy's response yeah no and I I think um you know with life it's just it's just especially now everyone is connecting and talking and listening to people virtually and it's it's very difficult you know i was just sharing with monica before we started um i was on a call recently and the topic was it was somewhat very serious and you know you could tell by everyone's body language you know people are focused and their intent and they're purposefully listening but this one guy um he was just hearing he was not listening to anything at all and it was very evident because he had a cleaning lady there and he was standing up and he was on the phone and you could see the woman cleaning and he's obviously doing something else. And we're all sitting there kind of mortified, like, man, if he could just turn his camera off, <laughs> it probably would have been better. But then seeing that it became a distraction for me because I'm looking like, man, what's going to happen next? You know, <laughs> instead of focusing on what the, the person was was talking about, I, my attention was on that guy. So. Just a little another tidbit, be very mindful about your cameras. You know, I know it's it's always good to see each other, especially in these times. But if you have to work on multiple things at once, just make sure your camera is off. <laughs> but always be sure you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have any advice for um, getting people to listen to you more? You know, if you have a friend or somebody who's just never is really in the conversation. Yeah, so I think for myself, um, especially, you know, people, they can't be still or sit still for a certain amount of time. So I try to, when I, if I have a friend like that, I just try to get into their element, um, whether it be if they, so I, for example, I have a friend who, um, who's really into cooking. So um, she invited me over one day and She's not the best listener, but I had something that I wanted to, you know, share with her and to express her. So I said, you know what, why don't I go on her grounds and speak to her and do something that she loves? And maybe while we're doing that, I can share with her 
what I need to, to do because I'm taking myself out of my comfort zone and going into her element and doing what she wants. So, and it seemed to, it, it worked out very well because, um, you know, like I said, we were in her element. So maybe being in an element that someone is more comfortable in um, will help them be uh, better listeners. And my my listening, um, like I said, I have a five-year-old, so I'm always combating with uh, listening and how to how to do better with it. But it takes time, you know. It's it's certainly not something that is easy to do. But with patience, um, I think it, it it goes a long way. It is, and that goes for speaking as well, because this is doing this. What I'm doing right now is certainly out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it's important. So, you know, it, it takes practice. It takes practice, you know, practice. When you practice something, you, you tend to do better at it. So mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we had um, Doxa had commented in the chat of they started using the talking stick at home so that each person gets a turn to speak about their day and make sure that everyone is listening. Yeah. That's a good one. I love the talking stick. That's a really good one. <laughs> It's harder virtually, I guess. It's like WebEx, right? You can pass that little ball to each other and be like, here you go, you're in control now, but it's an important feature. Certainly. Yeah, we used to use the talking stick in Cub Scouts quite effectively. <laughs> I had a little I had a little rubber chicken and that was our talking stick. <laughs> so with a bunch of boys, that was great. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna um I'm actually going to speak to my boss and because we have Tuesday standing Tuesday meetings in the morning. So maybe I should um, we should do it in a way where everybody can have something. And if you don't put up the stick or the prop, the, the prop or whatever, you have to be quiet because it, it, it helps with even with time and being efficient with time, because as you guys know, meetings can go on and on and on. And people, they just, you know, doing their own thing and not listening. But I like that talking stick idea. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to try to try to implement that all the all the, the talking turkey talking <laughs> the, the talking chicken. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments? Oh, you got a nice uh, comment. Louise wrote, thank you, Nimota. Very helpful information. Also, I love to listen to you. Thank you, Louise. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just putting in the chat um, our website address, make sure I've spelled it right, um, for some other programs. If you're interested in um, telling your story right or the Women um, in Tech Mentor program, both of them are up there, as well as tons of other things in cyber security and data. There are lots of good programs. If anyone on this call is um, interested in certified ethical hacking, I know very different from listening, but we do have a program that starts uh, next Tuesday. It's 40 hours of uh, training. So if that's of interest to you, please reach out to me. Um, I had sent everyone the link for this so I can get you information on that, but it, it looks like it's gonna be a great program. And we I think we have maybe three seats left for that training. So I'd like to thank all of you very much for attending. We look forward to having you at future Tech Collective events. And thank you, Nimoda, for agreeing to my very hard sell uh, to get you here. I know that people have certainly benefited as well as I have this morning. So thank you kindly for giving of your time and talent to us. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity, Monica. Thank you. Alrighty. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Nimota. Thank you. Have a Thank good you, Nemota. Thank Great you. Great job. Thanks, Jim.